Hello and welcome, this is Daniel of Daniel Game Studios, and today we are going to be looking at what I've been doing recently in my spare time. No, uh, no Unreal uh, stuff today, uh, but recently I have been working on my own game engine. I'm calling it the uh, Savage Game Engine, and it is going to be based off of, uh, well, it's going to, it's based off of a already existing open source engine called uh, Primal uh, under an MIT license and my goal for my uh, customizations to the engine is to essentially have a open source version of the original Geomod physics system that was used in the Red Faction games uh, 1 and 2. Uh, we don't really talk about 2, 2 kinda sucked but Red Faction uh, 1 and I believe the best way to simulate this would be with a, uh, would be with a, um, what's it called? Uh, would be with a marching cubes based system and applying gravity to, uh, any disconnected parts of that. So here's, a, so basically what marching cubes is, is you have, uh, wow, that really sucks. Let me get a straight line tool. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, yeah. So basically, Marching Cubes is a system in which, uh, you have basically these little areas, uh, they're kind of like voxels, if you want to think about it that way, though. They aren't, uh, voxels. Um, it's a little more complicated than it just being voxels, but basically, um, let's start with Marching Squares first. Marching squares would say, say, uh, you basically have to store four points of information, uh, okay, I can't draw a circle to save my life, apparently. Um, but, uh, yeah, you basically have these four points that you'd look at, and you'd record if there is geometry here, if there's geometry here, here, and here. And say there is, uh, geometry here, it would basically take the half of that and, uh, draw like that. Or say there was geometry here and here, uh, it could draw geometry like, like this would all be shown on the screen if there was pixels here and here, and this would be blank. Or uh, you know, there's multiple different permutations. It could be uh, here and here, but not here and here. You know, uh, and this also applies in uh, three dimensions as well uh, to have a marching cube system. Um, the thing with marching cubes is it allows for on-the-fly generation because all you have to tell the GPU's frame buffer is that there is information uh, that there's information here, 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 and here. You don't have to tell it how that information works. You just have to tell it there is geometry here. There is not geometry here. Uh, it has this texture. Apply that, and you can essentially make a mesh without having to actually model anything. Um, just by relying on mathematics. Uh, the, the thing that allows for destruction in that is that in real time you could say uh, you could say destroy a pixel here and then if that's in 3D like you could destroy a point here and if that's in 3D parts of your geometry will actually go away because that's how the marching cube system works. Um, and Basically, how Savage is going to work is that every uh, entity will be automatically converted into a marching cubes representation. Um, and then, after being converted into this marching cube uh, representation, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to destroy that, and the engine will keep track of whenever um, actual. The engine will keep track of whenever uh, whenever something no longer is connected to another thing. So say I have this cube here. Let's just say this is the floor. Uh, oh, wait. Um, let's just say this is the floor, so it always, no matter what, is always uh, considered connected. But then say we have this point here active, this point here active, and this point... Uh, here and then let's say over here in here we draw something uh, very hard to think about this in three dimensions without having something like blender open uh, but we draw 
basically the GPU would draw all this as being connected while leaving out those other points, but then say that we kill this point. Uh, let's say that we kill, let me make this red. Let's say that we uh, kill this point right here so it's no longer part of the marching cubes. What will happen is that because it's no longer, because these points are all no longer connected, these two things over here will form their own geometry which will fall away uh, to the ground following a standard rigid body physics system. And that will allow for real time destruction. Uh, that's enough of me just blabbering about the uh, what I want to happen. I'm just going to show what I have so far. Um, let's see. What? Okay, so basically I have uh, four, four, four projects with one of them being a test. I have the editor, which is what you actually see while using the engine. Um, so if I was to press play here, it's currently the startup project. If I was to press uh, play here and let uh, Visual Studio take its time, it's sweet, sweet ass time. Um, I have little, uh, I have designs here. I have these place, these are all placeholders. They don't, they aren't actually different. They're all empty projects essentially. Sorry, but you can, uh, you can rename uh, wherever you want, you can put your location wherever you want, um, and you can open up existing projects. So say I want to open up this project. This is all custom WPF controls. Uh, this is just, uh, this is just like a for show thing. This is just a debug thing that I was working on. I have, uh, you can add it, you can add the different components. You can add and remove entities. It has a undo and redo system that saves everything. You can multi-select and change all those values at once. Um, you can move the editor around every which way. It has uh, custom, minimize, maximize, and close buttons. Uh, escape would work. Alt F4 works. Uh, you know, basic stuff that's kind of needed. Um, the editor right now is. Uh, like, uh, the editor by far has taken the most effort already. Um, actually, there's a comically big uh, CS file that I find kind of interesting. Oh, I know it's in, uh, it's a XAML file. Oh, it's not. <laughs> you can just scroll and scroll and scroll. This is everything that controls how, uh, this is everything that controls all the different uh, buttons and stuff that you saw, all that custom stuff. And I also have, uh, these are the editor's colors. I don't know why it's picking on that color in specific, but yeah, these are all the different uh, colors that the editor has uh, to keep a consistent color scheme. Um, but that, I mean, that's basically the editor is what I showed you. It has systems that work, you can save and Close and all that. Um, if I actually go over to the engine, I have no clue why I'm so tired. Uh, if I actually go over to the engine, it makes a uh, it makes a folder in documents for it that saves the project. These are just uh, XAML or no uh, normal XML uh, generated by Visual Studio, so it's not really anything uh, special. Uh, if I just go back into the engine, um, let's see. The next thing that exists is this uh, test program. At the moment, all it does is interface with the engine and create and destroy entities until um, there's a buffer overflow, overflow bug that I haven't uh, fixed yet. Like if I run the uh, test program, it should just be x64 release no 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 it's uh the debug build still if i run the engine test it will create and delete entities this is actually all happening um i can open it in the debug view if i wanted to and it would actually you'd actually see how this is using uh ram actually oh, uh let's see can i show the engine Utilizing memory. I want to change that from resource memory to values. Um, 
let's see. So one megabyte. 6.4 megabytes. Okay. I guess it doesn't really, but you can see it's using CPU, so it's doing something. And it does crash eventually. Um, eventually. Uh, because there is a current kind of hard-coded limit, because how this works is essentially there are generations of entities um, inside of a fixed grid. There we go. Uh, let's see. So there's a certain amount, basically, to allow for entities to be destroyed and created uh, without having to update every single reference, because that could get kind of memory intensive. Um, there is a limit to the amount of generations you can have, as each entity reference has a generation and an actual entity ID. And I just reached that uh, maximum. An assertion just failed, and yeah, um, abort the program. Let's see what else exists. There is the engine itself. I'm skipping over the DLL for right now because the DLL kind of relies on the engine. But there's also the uh, yeah, there's the DLL, which is uh, basically just uh, exposing engine components. Uh, it's not that important. Uh, well, I mean, it's important. It's just that it's not that like interesting to talk about really. Uh, so there's the you know, there's everything about the DLL and the engine's API. Um, but on the actual engine front, uh, this is where the second most amount of time is gone, and it's where all my new time is going to be going. Uh, yes, I can speak completely normal English. What do you mean? Uh, but yeah, that's where all my time is going to be going. Um, the scope controls the entities. Uh, these are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, there are different components. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of, this is all on GitHub if you want to look more into it, but I've put a lot of uh, work into making sure that the engine uh, is interesting. Right now, we finally have reached a stage where I can actually utilize the engine's uh, API to uh, create an EXE utilizing the engine that references the engine. This is a separate project uh, in... Visual Studio, where its only reference is if I go to, uh, where it doesn't have any of the engine code, but I can reference the engine after doing the right pointing and, uh, utilizing the right, uh, utilizing the right includes, uh, because I have to include the right stuff, um, but yeah, I can actually communicate with the API and make a project at this point in time. Right now, I'm working on automating that such that the editor will actually create a project. Because right now, the uh, XAML file uh, that is created by the editor isn't actually proper game code or anything. That's just an editor representation. I still have to make the... Uh, I'm working on making the translation such that the engine... Or, sorry, such that the editor can speak to the engine and actually show... Uh, and actually generate a Visual Studio solution file that can be built. Um, so that's what I've been working on. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't have too much else left to add. That's what I've been working on. It's um, something that I've really been interested in and into, working on game design and destructible entities, all of that fun stuff. Um, and... Uh, if you want to learn more about it, it's called Savage Engine. It's on GitHub. Uh, I have a Discord in the description. I have its GitHub page in the description. Uh, if you like it, feel free to uh, like the video. Give the engine a star on GitHub. If you don't need C++ or C Sharp, uh, feel free to help. I'm utilizing Windows Platform Framework and uh, <clears throat> .NET uh, 3.6, I believe it's core. Um, so if you're if you know any of those different things, uh, feel free to help. Um, it's going to be rendering in DirectX. Uh, I might do a Vulkan port sometime, but I know DirectX more. So, but uh, yeah, with all that said, uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.